Hello there, lovely ladies, lovely gentlemen. Hello there, lovely ladies and lovely gentlemen who are on Facebook, the Free and Empowered Facebook group. So we are going to talk about three great tips for managing time in general, but specifically during the pandemic. Now, before we go any further, if you're watching this on YouTube, make sure to subscribe, hit the bell so you get notified when we put out new videos in English. All right. So the very first tip, I'm going to jump right into it, okay? The very, very first tip that I'm going to give you about how to manage your time is to set up a very clear intention for what you want to do with this time of yours. Now, what do I mean by set up a clear intention? We're actually going to do this in one sentence. Well, think about it. Many of us, we're really bad at time management because there's so much self-sabotage involved. So it's absolutely normal for us to self-sabotage and procrastinate, particularly when it comes to new goals or goals that really, you know, they're, they're dear to our heart. Why is that? It's because we have oftentimes many limiting beliefs about ourselves that create a glass ceiling for all of our success. So particularly if you came from a toxic family, you've probably created glass ceilings when it comes to how much success you can have. Even, I don't know, losing weight, finding love, building a business, you know, um, having great emotional regulation. So when I talk about us needing to define a very clear intention for how we're going to use our time, I'm talking about taking into consideration these limiting beliefs that actually don't help us further our own causes, right? So I'm going to give you a couple more examples so this becomes a little bit more clear for everybody involved. I used to be the sort of person that one, always wanted to be very, very productive, but I didn't take very good care of myself. So what ended up happening is I would wake up in the morning and I would put all self-care habits like in the back burner or you know in the back seat and I wouldn't pay attention to self-care and hygiene and then I would find myself always being in this energy of like oh my god I have to get stuff done I have to get stuff done I have to get stuff done and then what ended up always happening is that in the beginning of the day, I'd be like, oh, you know, I don't have time to exercise right now, but I'll do that later. Oh, you know, I don't have time to make a proper meal. I'll just eat whatever's available. And then, you know, later on after work, then I'll get down to actually making a nice meal. So whenever it came to self-care, I would leave that for later. And then lo and behold, I never got around to doing it. So what this generated is this habit of when I'm not focusing, when I wasn't focusing on the actual objective or the activities that I had decided to do, you know, I was thinking about how I needed to do them and I was getting all stressed out because I was like, oh damn, I have to do that thing. I have to get to that other thing as well. But then when it came around to actually doing them, I started self-sabotaging and procrastinating and it took so long to finally get around to doing whatever I, I told myself I would that then there wouldn't be any time left over for self-care. And then the next day, what would I need to do? I would self-sabotage even more because I was so stressed out from the day before that I would look for easy fixes in terms of feeling pleasure, like eating compulsively or you know, um, scrolling through Instagram compulsively. So that's what happens when you're not clear on, on the energy with which and the intention with which you want to approach time management. Now, from, from those days I, when I used to think, oh, I have to be productive, I have to make stuff happen no matter what, to nowadays a lot has changed, particularly I'm sure that the pandemic has put you in a situation where you can really reevaluate what has been working and what hasn't been working. Now for me, particularly when it comes to self-care, I've decided to, and, and to productivity, I've decided to set up an altogether new intention productive no matter what. Now my intention is to be efficient in a pleasurable and light way. Isn't this completely different? Think about it. If I want to honor this new intention, hey, sorry guys, we're having some connection problems over here. 
If I want to honor this new intention of being efficient in a pleasurable and light way, then I have to change my habits. I can't just wake up and not even brush my teeth or eat or pee and start working like a maniac. So this allowed me to change my habits. So what did I do in practice? What I did was I decided that during the first part of the day, I was going to take care of my hygiene, my self-care, my exercising, cooking, taking care of the house. And when I felt like I had nurtured myself and taken good care of myself, then I was properly energized to get down to work. And you know what I discovered? When I put self-care first, because my intention towards how I wanted to use and experience my time changed, it actually made me focus a lot more when I got down to work. So this is what I mean by, in a sentence, tell me what your intention for your time is. What do you want to do with your time in the pandemic? I want to honor my my inner growth and healing during this pandemic i want to be efficient in a way that supports my mental health i want to be productive by simplifying as much as i can get what i'm saying so come up with one intention for how you're going to use your time in one sentence excellent so the second tip that i want to give you on on time management for the pandemic, and this is useful for absolutely anything in your life. And if you take this tip seriously, it's honestly going to change your life. It absolutely changed my life. And this is called the 80-20 principle. Now, you've probably heard of this, and if you take time management courses, they will certainly cover this topic because it's so important. And what the 80-20 principle is really referring to is the fact that we've observed that not everything has the same level of impact when it comes to you know pushing your projects forward because it's not true that all of the different activities that you could be focusing on have the same impact or, or, or the same influence on your results. The 80-20 principle actually means that 80% of effects come from 20% of the causes and we can observe this in nature, in, in social phenomena. We can observe this in, in, in things that happen in our lives. We see that it's consistently true. And I'll give you some examples so, so this will be actually clear. For example, 20% of criminals commit 80% of the crimes. We know that, you know, we have repeat offenders and that's why we have so many crimes, but it's like 20% of them that, that commit about 80% of them. And of course, these percentages can go a little bit up, a little bit down, 10% and 90%, 30% and 70%. But we know that the greater part of the effects come from a small number of causes, and that's the issue. So other examples would be 20% of drivers cause 80% of all traffic accidents. 80% of pollution originates from 20% of all factories. 20% of companies' products represent 80% of the sales. This is totally true. When you have a company that's got like five different products that it works with, when you see where the sales actually come from, you will see that almost consistently, almost always, there's one product or two products. There's a smaller percentage of products that are actually responsible for the bulk of the sales. So likewise, and now we're going to transfer this 80-20 principle to your time management, okay? Likewise, you want to do the same thing. You want to figure out what are the activities or the one activity that is going to have 80% of the impact on you actually being able to experience your intention of time management during the pandemic. Hey there, girl. Glad you're watching. Hey, guys. So how are we going to do this? Let's say you want to lose weight. Well, first you make a list of all of the things, all of the tasks pertaining to your goal. And if you want to lose weight, you might have to eat healthy, do exercise, watch videos about nutrition, um, watch motivational videos. There's many different activities that could be involved in losing weight. But if I ask you, okay, but where does 80% of your weight loss come from? Does it come from motivational videos? Does it come from exercise? And does it come from this? Does it come from that? And when you stop and analyze it, you'll know, ah, no, wait, I can even exercise. But if I'm eating pizza every day, 
that's not going to cut it for me. You know where 80% of my weight loss is going to come from? From focusing on my diet, from focusing on eating fresh, real foods. So then you know, if you want, if you have a goal of losing weight, you know that 80% of your effort has got to go towards your diet. Even if you spend a couple weeks without working out, if you just focus on your diet, you will lose the weight. Likewise, if you're launching a digital company and you're way in the beginning and you don't have a lot of clients yet, and there's so many things you could do in your company, you could change the color of the font in your website, you could write a post and post it on social media, you could send out an email, you could post a video, you can uh, write content, but then when you stop and think about it in practice, you know that the bulk of your clients come from the emails. So let's say, why is it so important to know which activity generates the bulk of the results? Because you also know what to focus on when everything goes wrong. Because isn't it true that most of the times we come up with these ideas and these lists about things we want to, um, to accomplish and then stuff doesn't go our way and then we just throw our list out the window? The 80-20 principle is going to help you identify in any sort of chaos what that one thing you need to focus on is. So if you, for example, if you're launching that online business and there's all of these different things that you could do and you have a list of a bunch of things you got to do today, but everything just went wrong. You know, you had an internet problem and you had this other problem and your baby had a problem. At the end of the day, in the midst of all that chaos, you know that if you just send an, if you send an email to your list, this is where the bulk of your results are going to come from. So you know what to focus on. So the second tip I'm giving you for time management, I swear this will change your life if you just take it seriously, is... Make a list of all of the activities um, that pertain to you reaching your goal and then be crystal clear about which ones you are going to abandon when stuff goes wrong and which one you will focus on no matter what, all right? If you follow the 80-20 principle, you will find that you will get a lot further in your goals. And the third, um, the third tip that I want to give you, and this is super important, particularly if you follow coaches like Todd Herman from the 90 day year, he will talk a lot about feedback loops. Now, what's a feedback loop? Why is it important for productivity? Why do I want to do this during the pandemic? What's up with a feedback loop? Generally, what we do is we start doing all sorts of things all willy nilly and we don't observe what works and what doesn't work. Now, remember, I just talked about the 80-20 principle. You can't really figure out which um, it, which if causes uh, um, generate the greatest effects. If you don't know what you're doing exactly, you need to know everything that you're doing. Why do you need to know what you're doing? Because in a feedback loop scenario, what you're going to do is you're going to separate some time to go over what you've done that week. I suggest you do this at least once a week. You can do it daily. You can do it monthly. And you're going to sit down and analyze all of your activities in the light of three specific questions. The first question you're going to ask yourself is, what worked? The second question you're going to ask yourself is, what didn't work? And the third question you're going to ask yourself is, okay, what can I try this next week? Hey there, let's open hearts. How are you doing? <laughs> so for example, let's go back to, let's say that you started a course, right? The pandemic started and you're like, oh, I'm going to take this course. I'm going to have so much time. I'm going to study all day. And then, you know, you had to, you, you, you planned on reading 50 pages, but then you only read 10 pages at the end of a, of a week. So what are you going to do? You're going to sit down, get yourself some water or some coffee, and you're going to analyze your performance. Otherwise, you're just going to be repeating the same wrong stuff over and over and not refining your approach. We have to refine our approach, and that's what the feedback loop is for. So you ask yourself, what worked? Well, let's see. I meant to read 50 pages. I only read 10 pages. But why did that work that one day, though? I know why that worked that one day, because that was the only day that I talked to 
all of my friends and and you know the healthy part of my family and I got a whole lot of social love at a distance and I felt so nurtured inside that when I actually sat down to read the book I wasn't distracted I remember the other days I was feeling pretty pretty down and out you know pretty depressed and low because of the social distancing right so you write down okay what worked this week I got a whole lot of love through messaging the people I love and who love me back. And that set me up for actually reading the pages that I wanted to read. Okie dokie. So second question, what didn't work? And then you reflect on what didn't work. Okay, I only read the 10 pages out of the 50 pages. How come the other days it didn't work? Because on, on, on Thursday, I remember I talked to some of my friends, but what happened? What did I do differently? I, I know what I did differently. You know, I would, every day I would wake up and I'd be like, oh, mm, I have to read these pages. But you know what? I'll do that after lunch. And then after lunch, I was like, oh, yeah, you know what? I'll do that after I clean the house. And then after cleaning the house, I was like, oh, yeah, I I'll do that after putting the kids to bed. And then you never got around to doing it. So what didn't work? I left it for the end of the day and then <laughs> something else always popped up and then literally I never got around to doing it. So the third question, what can I try this next week? Well, if I need social support, I discovered that works for me and I also can't leave things uh, to the last minute because you know I always find something else to do. I know what I can try out this week. I'm gonna try a new morning routine. So my new morning routine is gonna go like this. When I wake up, I'm going to get my cell phone and send messages to the people I love the most. So whilst I'm brushing my teeth and making breakfast and getting ready for work, I'm getting flooded by all this love. And this is going to be great for me because I know this works for me. It sets me up energetically for, you know, doing the studying. And you know something else that I'm going to establish this next week? I am going to read those pages right after breakfast. Yep, I know that if I do it in the beginning of the day, I won't be just like leaving it till later over and over again until it's too late. And then you try that out for one week, see what works, what doesn't work, and do another feedback loop at the end of that second leap, uh, week. So if you follow this routine of doing feedback loops, you will eventually stop self-sabotaging because a lot of self-sabotage self has got to do with you being kind of um, unconscious. It's parts of our personalities that feel that you're, you're challenging a, 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 a glass ceiling that you've established for yourself. And of course, we know that the brain is quite lazy. It's always going to try to use the, the easiest path, right? The easiest sort of behavior. So when you go against that glass ceiling and, and these parts of you that keep telling you, no, you can't lose the weight. No, you know, you, you can't have that new profession. You can't be happier than your family. That'll be a betrayal. Or you can't look good. You're going to attract abusers because we know that 80% of obese women, for example, have been sexually abused. So all of these different parts of us that feel that our success is going to set off, uh, excuse the language, a shit show, it, it, they're easier to manage when we have feedback loops and we can identify how these different parts of us are sabotaging, uh, sabotaging us. So through these feedback loops, we can start changing the things we do on a day-to-day -day basis until we figure out what works for us, what works for you. So if you don't like waking up in the morning and you find that every day that you try to wake up at five o'clock in the morning to be extra productive, what ends up happening is you just, you know, go right back to sleep. But the fact that you had to wake up at five in the morning gets you even more tired. So then you only get out of bed at two, you know. But if you don't try to wake up at five in the morning because you respect the way that you work, then you find that you can get out of bed at eight. And that's quite a difference. So it's all about figuring out what works for you and adapting your approach through regular feedback loops. Okay, so to sum everything up, the three tips were, number one, in one sentence, set a clear intention for what you want to do with your time and how you want to experience time management. What are the things that you want to feel when it comes to time management? Ease, lightness, um, excitement. In one sentence, let me know what your intention is. 
And what I used as an example was my intention, which is to be efficient in a pleasurable and light way. This means that if I'm not having fun, I change stuff. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. If it's, if it's heavy and not light, I change stuff until it's light. The second tip is follow the 80-20 principle. This is really easy to do. Just make a list of all your activities that pertain to the objective you're trying to reach and then really observe which one or ones generate 80% of the results. And during those days where everything goes wrong and you can't get anything done and you only have a little bit of time and you have a huge list, you know that you can ignore a bunch of stuff because you know what you can focus on, what you're supposed to focus on. And the last tip is have regular feedback loops where you will be forced to get out of reality distortion mode where you don't actually see what you're doing or what um, what results it's are being generated and actually sit down regularly and look at what worked, what didn't work, and what you can do this next week. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much. Thank you so much, girl. I'm so glad that this is the message that you needed, especially today. I love that sort of feedback. Let me know what, what made sense to you. Um, if you've heard about the 80-20 principle, if you've ever thought about setting a clear intention, including what you want to feel emotionally when it comes to time management, let me know in the comments. If you're watching this on YouTube and you haven't subscribed to the channel, then subscribe to the channel. Make sure you hit the bell so you get notified when we put out new videos in English. And also subscribe to my mailing list. I have giveaways and discounts and all sorts of things that I only give out through my mailing list. Um, you can find it. In, if you're on Instagram, send me a message. I'll, I'll send you my mailing list. Here, it's in the description of the video. And on YouTube, it'll be in the description of the video. Guys, thank you so much for your time. Take good care of yourself, all right? You can, we all can come through the other side of this, these delicate times, fortified, wiser, more serene, more in touch with our true selves and more in touch with the values that we've been ignoring. All right. Thank you guys so much.